The digital age is certainly expanding the mechanisms available for citizens to have access to information and form their opinions on the basis of that information. It's, all, it's certainly also increasing access for information in terms of forming better policies and in expanding the mechanisms and the instruments for political participation for citizens. But it's also bringing uh, very important and deep challenges in terms of two fundamental aspects of democracy um, that have to do with the deliberative process, the quality of our deliberation, how we collectively decide, and also with the quality of our public sphere that super supports democracy. That is, uh, uh, the public arena in which we exchange different points of view about different issues, uh, in which we engage as citizens. Uh, and that's the crucial challenges that we have today. Um, the digital age is fragmenting our public space, is uh, uh, creating and feeding a more radicalized form of political uh, discourse. He's, by uh, um, promoting a form of democracy that is more direct and immediate, also uh, making decisions more emotionally based and less rationally infused and embedded. And this creates problems for democracy because democracy is not simply about counting ads, it's not simply about uh, expressing the preferences of people, it's not simply about majoritarian decisions, it's also about the quality of the processes through which we form our opinions and how we collectively deliberate and engage with each other. I think we have to um, imagine and recreate instruments of intermediation, that is, spaces for introducing rationality into politics. I mean, we are in, 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 in Tuscany, uh, 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 and I currently live in Florence, where I direct the School of Governance of the EUI, and uh, a famous author there is Dante and the Divine Comedy. And I always give the example of the Divine Comedy because Dante is a company through purgatory and hell by Virgil before arriving to paradise where he's welcomed by Beatrice. Uh, Beatrice is the embodiment of passion, is the woman that he loved. Uh, but Virgil, that is the person that guides Dante through the difficulties of hell and purgatory until he reaches the door or of paradise, is, uh, is a poet that is the embodiment of reason. And in this, Dante gives us as metaphor for life that is a metaphor for successful politics. You need the right balance between passion and reason. Uh, um, the digital age is giving us all these instruments to express our passions and our emotions. Now we need to think about how we can create instruments on the digital age that do not simply make information more easily avail available, that facilitate how we meet, how we engage with other people, but the quality of our thinking processes. This is what we need to uh, invest more for the future. How we can use the digital instruments to improve the quality of our deliberative processes, to improve the rationality with which we think collectively. It's the deep challenge that we have and it's on that that we have to engage our intellectual resources and even also our technological resources. There are aspects in which the new technologies and big data and the analytical of big data and the digital, the information we can have access and, and, and analyze in the digital age, certainly are already uh, helping improving uh, our public policies uh, uh, because uh, they provide more evidence-based public policies. It's easier to uh, know what are the preferences of people uh, it is easier to measure the outcomes of public policies and, for example, that means that we can have public policies that are more informed and therefore better public policies and it also means that we can have public policies that are less focused on outputs, that is, uh, uh, how many schools we have, how many professors we have and more focus on outcomes, how better our students are because it facilitates measuring public policies in that way. This certainly helps public policies. But this access to information and these same instruments also present risks. 
uh, first in democratic terms, as I already mentioned, because they uh, decrease in some aspects the capacity and the potential for collective deliberation, but also because all this information that is available can be used by the state to have better policies, but can be used by the state also to develop almost a big brother that knows everything about us and that can decide uh, our access or not to certain public services on the basis of data on how much we are liked on our social responsibility on a variety of domains. Uh, 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 in the same way that we as citizens now rate on TripAdvisor and other sites the quality of hotels and restaurants, it's possible that we might in the future be rated by other citizens on how good citizens we are, or rated by the state, depending on how we perform as drivers or in any other way, how, how good citizens we are. And on the basis of that, then our access to public services might be discriminated. There might be things on which this might be acceptable, but this might at the same time progressively lead us to almost a big brother uh, uh, world. And that's the, both the potential, but also the risks involved in uh, these new technologies and the digital age. And what is, will be really crucial for us is to be able to have the moral, ethical uh, uh, judgment uh, capacity to be able to use them for the good but not for the bad.